So if you've watched our last two videos, on part one, we spoke about charmability at the listing presentation. Part two was all about the imagination, reaching into your prospects like unconscious level, where all the decisions are made. And now we're gonna talk about like part three. Well, what's part three, Claudia? It's the roadmap and really like sort of structure to your presentation because you need some sort of roadmap and structure to lead to a certain outcome. And people love structure. Let's get, be honest here. People don't wanna be like going, you're bouncing from here, you're bouncing from there, and then they walk out of there going, I'm so confused with that agent, I didn't know what exactly he was talking about. So you need to have that structure and roadmap. So how would I start that with the roadmap and structure? Number one, I always talk about price. Why? Because if we're not agreeing on price, it's the first thing that I wanna sort of attack. You know, it's like if there's an anchor in my life, I go and attack that. And I find that pricing is the first thing you wanna talk about with your prospect. How do I talk about price? I like them to make the decision. Remember we spoke about embedded commands in video two around the listing presentation? So what would an embedded command look like around pricing? Just grabbing my pen and paper, sorry to jump out of the camera. But let's just say for example, I see agents use CMAs printed out from RP data and it's like a, a 30 page, like blah, 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 blah. You know what, you're gonna bore your clients. Keep it simple, reverse engineer it and just do it really simple. What does it look like? You should have half a dozen sales, your highest sale price on the top to your lowest sale price with the relevant sales. And you'll go through each one and you'd probably say, you know, so Tom, you, you, did you see this three bedroom apartment that sold just a couple of weeks ago, two floors up from you, it sold for 1.1. There was one here just about a month ago that sold around the corner, similar property, but you have better views and that sold for 980,000. And I would walk through each one and ask Tom and, and interact with him, engage him, right? And then basically, after I've done all the six sales, I would say, so Tom, based on all those sales, where do you think your home sits on the market? And as I do that, over the table, I pass the sales and the pen. My instinct would be to pick up the pen and maybe circle which one. That will happen eight times out of 10. I have had agents where they've gone cladded, but they push the pen back and go, you're the expert, you tell me. It is gonna happen. But majority of people will wanna feel the power and go, I think it's worth about X. And then you can talk about it if you agree or disagree. But here's the thing. I've seen agents today in this marketplace losing it over price. Meaning that some other agent's gone in there and told them a higher price than you. Remember, what is an embedded command? It's about making the person feel comfortable and giving them the power. Let them decide where they think their home sits on the market. And then you can disagree or agree. Next thing you wanna talk about is obviously the process auction versus private treaty. Again, as you do that, provide facts and evidence. Don't just say auctions is the way to go. How could you say, for example, provide facts and evidence that auctions is a really good market to auction your home right now? Go like 80% is a boom market, 70% is a good market, 60% is an average market, and anything less than 60 or 50% down is a down market. And you could say to them, at the moment, interest rates currently, and we're talking in Sydney, are a little bit over 80%. We're in a boom market. So it makes a lot of sense, Tom, that you may want to consider going to auction, but give them the facts and evidence. Then we go through the marketing. I always like to use like a bit of a marketing menu rather than going with a marketing plan. Marketing menu, it's like, again, the embedded command. So Tom, how many photos would you like to see of your home? Tell me the best features and benefits that you love around your house. And you might talk to me about, oh, well, Claudia, we'd love the facade. We'd love the back garden with the deck leading out to the pool. Uh, we'd love one of the kitchen. Okay, that sounds like there's three photos. So three photos is going to cost you $450, okay? And then you put that into the menu. And then copywriting, I think we need someone to come in here and talk about the beautiful home and story tell the wonderful features and benefits of the home, etc. That's going to cost X, Y, Z. And then you walk them through it in a marketing menu where they choose what they would like. Okay? And that makes people feel more comfortable. Again, little embedded commands. Then from basically marketing, we move on to why you and why the company that you represent. What do you stand for? And you may want to talk about the degrees of separation when you do that. From marketing, you've got to talk about negotiation. And when I talk about negotiation, have a negotiation index. I think that's super important. This is what I'm going to do for you, because you probably may not have a negotiation index. Email me, and I'll be more than happy to send you what a sample of a negotiation index looks like. Because basically it has the last 20 sales that you've done, and on average, how far you've negotiated from the first offer to the last offer. And it works out what your negotiation rate is, because that's where people are seeing the value. 
Like, are you going to be the superior negotiator to sell my home? After negotiation, you may want to talk a little bit about communication and the communication process during the sale of the home. And then finally, I really find, you know, I ask agents, what's your close? And I've got to tell you, like, half of the agents don't have a close. It's like, the close sounds a little bit like, okay, Tom, um, do you have any questions? No, um, okay, would it be okay if I just give you a call on Monday then? And Monday's too late. You've got to have something that leads to some sort of close. And a good trial close, that leads to a big close, is pull out your marketing calendar and you could start to say, so Monday and Tuesday, what I'm gonna to do, Tom, is start ringing all my hot buyers, because that's, that's on our calendar. Then Wednesday, we're gonna have a dust shot. We're gonna bring Tom in to get a dust shot done. And then Thursday, he'll come back and do a daylight, daylight shot. Then um, we've got the first open coming on that Saturday, the 12th of, let's call it April. What time would you like to see the home opened, Tom? Do you think that it would be best to open it in the morning or the afternoon? When is it best show its light? And Tom might say, well, morning. Well, why don't we close in, tentatively book in 10 to 10.30? And then it's called a trial close, a little thing like that. So now that you've seen, this is the overview of what your sales campaign looks like, Tom. All we need to do now, if you're happy to proceed, is get a go forward authority signed off. And that's generally the agency agreement. It's not that difficult, but it does have a structure and a roadmap that leads to the outcome that you're looking for, which is a desired outcome, a signed agency agreement. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed our last three videos. The Charm Ability, if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out. Make sure you start tapping into the imagination of your prospects. And finally, make sure you have a roadmap and a structure that leads to your desired outcome, which is winning the listing.